Hey, this is Rido, and we are back with another live stream of Hearthstone. Today is Friday, May 25th. It is Memorial Day weekend starting, I guess, kind of now, but definitely tomorrow. So, like, I already know I'm not going to play any games tomorrow. Um, but I did play a little bit of Hearthstone off screen on my Asian account. There was a challenger friend I got. And for that reason, I just played it when I saw somebody was online um, in the middle of just a weird couple hours where I knew I wasn't going to be recording footage, but also wasn't doing much of anything else. In fact, let's face it, all Thursday, uh, again, dealing with sickness, I, I was playing with real Lego instead of playing the Lego Star Wars Force Unleashed video game. Guess I need to play Hunter and Priest class cards. This Tavern Brawl has turned out to be one of the best Tavern Brawls ever. If not the best Tavern Brawl ever. Unfortunately I can't play it. On this Asian account I guess I need to play, play cards and if I was going to play cards would it make sense to play wild on the Asian account or should I just play mid-range hunter and try to get up on ranked? I think we'll just do that. Now I guess using the phrase bearing the lead would be slightly distasteful but the most important bit of news I would argue that's happened between this stream and the previous one is that John Bain, also known as Total Biscuit, a YouTube video game critic, uh, streamer, um, he also has been published, and so he was kind of in this weird position kind of like Jim Sterling where like yes he was a real video game critic uh, who actually was employed by somebody at least for small portions of times but also he was mostly known for the co-optional podcast and all that anyways he's been going through uh, through having cancer and battling cancer for a few years now uh, most recently the update was that uh, all the things he was trying to prevent it from spreading or, or slow its increase had failed and so now he has actually passed away at least that's what his wife has put out as a on his Twitter feed so uh, the source is not really questionable unless this is some kind of cruel misunderstanding of joke. Uh, in fact, I think you'll probably not get any better guarantee that he did pass because he is he had already kind of not not been involved in any social media sites like Reddit. Uh, that's why when there was a message a few weeks ago on Reddit talking about how his cancer was worse, there really was no response from him, even on the co-optional podcast. Uh, he had already given up dealing with that. And I think, in part, the reason why he'd given up dealing with that certainly was the volatile nature of doing social media sites. Uh, Reddit, in general, I've heard is... is where a lot of angry people and angry traffic comes from. There's the whole Gamergate thing that Total Biscuit actually defended Gamergate from the perspective of actually having ethics and journalism. And in fact, he, with his passing, this might be the pass, passing of the last ethical video game journalist uh, that I could name uh, that, that is really, really passionate about that and, and takes and takes that seriously. Even Krinder, his friend on the co-optional podcast, is really not being super ethical 
by being a video game critic slash YouTube streamer slash Twitch streamer and also selling the game Monster Party on, uh, on Steam. Uh, although I think Total Biscuit also did voice it, act in some games too, so there's always this weird collusion, nepotistic uh, buddy system that seems to always be prevalent in the video game industry, sadly. Um, of course, he passed from the cancer, I, I one assumes. Uh, I'll have the actual articles up at some point, if anything um, comes out strange about that, but it would be pretty insane if he, if he managed to pass for some other reason. Um, uh, he was, I believe, 33 years old. I wish I had these articles up. Let's just, let's just find these articles. Which, like, I'll, I'll never be able to find them. Hmm. Hey. Alright, here we go. Close. I'm dead. There you go. Tech Raptors. John. Quote, Total Biscuit Bane passes away at 33. At the age of 33, he does not look good. Uh, well, uh, speaking ill of the dead, I suppose, but uh, he does not look like a 33 year old should. Just just to put it simply, he's, he looks much closer to somebody who is about 48 or 50 would look. Um, of course, chemotherapy will happen. Will do that to you. Let's see. Uh, he was he had terminal bowel cancer diagnosed in 2015. Uh, he uh, recently announced his retirement from game criticism on the cynical Reddit board, which is I don't believe true. I. I because I don't think he actually went to that Reddit board. It was just kind of this middle ground person. Uh, I don't think his wife even went to it either. Uh, Jenna Bain had this long poem picture she put out. Uh, he passed May 24th, 2018. It was burned in Durham, England. Uh, or Spinnymore. County, Durham, England, uh, let's see, let's see, prior to 2010, Bay hey, ran a fan radio station for the, the popular MMO World of Warcraft, which received special acknowledgement from Blizzard Entertainment as well as invites to BlizzCon as early as 25 to cover the whole event. Uh, Bane was big into Blizzard games, StarCraft. Uh, Hearthstone. Let's see. Uh, he was their exposure on YouTube over videos on World of Warcraft Catalysm uh, in 2010. Hoping to earn money through ad revenue to support himself suffering a layoff, he also launched his main blog website cynicalbrit.com for general game news and events. Uh, Bane's first break was working as a commentator for StarCraft 2 matches Rexa. as he rose in popularity. He was Rexa. widely known for his in-depth critical analysis on popular YouTube Begin. shows as the WTF is series, which he hasn't done one of those in a decent amount of time. Um, well, I guess he won't do anymore. Uh, Bane was... Also an earlier promoter of independent games and hosted the long-running co-optional podcast. Which even the most recent co-optional podcast must have been pre-recorded. Or they just specifically did not bother to tell, to, to mention that he passed. I think it would be really silly for the co-optional podcast to not never mention. Uh, well no, because they even in the most recent co-optional podcast uh, said that that he was coming back next week which screams to me that they simply were not told 
in time for that pre-recording. Now they don't record that early, and they really can't uh, for how that is, so maybe they could record a day or two early at most, but it, I imagine it was just a few hours before he, he, news came out. In Bain's final Reddit post, he was optimistic about the future of co-optional podcasts and the cynical Brit network. Again, I just don't believe that he was on Reddit. I, that's just not how I understood he was spending his last bit of life. Uh, so, maybe he was only looking at his subreddit maybe he wasn't looking at anything and just kind of reposting on reddit hmm. uh the quote is i fully expect the co-optional podcast to go on and i love the thought that once i've gotten the chance to go on in my absence hosted by the person who knows me best and who has been with me for this whole better part of my adult life so he's talking of course about his wife and I'm not sure if really Jenna Bain is enough of a personality to to maintain the audience. She'll probably continue the channel regardless, but uh, whether people stick, keep watching is a whole different thing. Uh, it's been a privilege, is another quote, and another quote is thank you for letting me into your life. Bain is survived by his wife Jenna and his stepson. Our thoughts and prayers today. Now, here's the thing uh, about Total Biscuits passing and the coverage of it. If you think he's being covered the right amount, then then there is no problem whatsoever. Like, if you think that is the right amount of coverage for somebody to pass that you've seen before i have announcing it here unless of course i'm just your only source of video game news uh, if you think he is being covered announced way too much on reddit i might agree with you if you think the actual mainstream media is not reporting him uh, on it at all that is certainly true i was watching uh cnn as the announcement of him passing was was going on and, and CNN was literally not saying anything other than promoting their weekend documentary about 1969 and so they they had no real news to to, to promote instead they're, they're doing probably mandatory commercials for their own stuff they certainly could have seen, said something Maybe they even did say something at the very bottom of the scroll, but no commentary said anything. And I imagine the same is true for any other mainstream non-video game uh, news service. It's just John Bain, Total Biscuit, while he may have been a big deal in the video game world, the video game world is still very much a tiny, tiny world of no real... In fact, let's face it, the only time that main news people talk about video games is when they want to blame, uh, when they want to spout NRA propaganda out and blame school shootings on video games. And even then, most mainstream news sites won't do that. It's politicians now that are doing that. Um, so he was diagnosed with cancer in 2014 uh, but to finish my thought if you feel like the video game news reporting market is not reporting him enough there might be a reason remember total biscuit was one of the major figureheads that like i said actually reported gamergate as the thing that i truly believe it was instead of the vast majority of Kotaku and other people uh, uh, claiming that Gamergate was just video gamers are bad and sexist and they're attacking one of their friend friendly journalists, uh, their, their friends, which isn't really a story and I guess we kind of have to rehash Gamergate out. 
uh, a journalist was literally sleeping with a video game developer, the developer of the game Depression Quest, I believe. Uh, may, I'm pretty sure that's the, the game. And he was not disclosing that he was sleeping with her. Uh, um, while he was writing articles about her game and giving it positive reviews, there was a bad breakup of some sort. This information was leaked as kind of a revenge reveal. Uh, and that called for a better, that started calls for more ethics in gaming journalism because like, yeah, you cannot be sleeping with the person you're writing and reviewing games for and giving them glowing reviews. Uh, somehow, because of identity politics and SJW-ness, it kind of, it, it's only gotten way worse since, since this happened. Uh, and frankly, anybody that's really talking about Gamergate after this point is, is beating a dead horse because the video game mainstream news people have successfully muddied the water enough there that, that the story isn't clear. Uh, so uh, they came back and said, no, it was just a bunch of sexist people attacking this woman, the creative developed of a depression quest uh, for no reason. And they, they attacked in a major overshoot all video gamers because the vast majority at, at that point had not even heard the story. Were, were not really even crying for ethics in games journalism. So you have this twofold violation of ethics. You have one where some a journalist is sleeping with a games creator, and then you have a second violations of ethics in journalism because now the much larger uh, industry of video game news reporters have provably colluded and worked together to cook up and create a false story and so they proved anyone who said wait a minute these guys are not acting ethically and these are are are, are you know, unacceptable behaviors for news journalists uh, they, they proved it not because the one guy was sleeping with the games journalist but because they all work together to attack somebody and make a story where there was no no story there in the first place and they made this story they cooked up the story and attacked all video gamers and now even to this day the SJWs out there are still pushing this narrative that all games are gamers are sexist all gamers are are evil all gamers are violent misogynist uh, all gamers are toxic. Uh, we we need the death of gamers, and it was and it was a really ridiculous, childish, stupid, unthought out way to deal with anything. Uh, honestly, if you're gonna kill all the kill a story, there's two ways to kill a story. It's either you ignore it till it goes away, and if you understand news reporting, which apparently video game news reporters don't you would know that the news cycle in these days is half a second so you just ignore a story report on something different uh, Fox News arguably does this very well in which they just will literally not report on certain stories and report on something different uh, that's a decent enough way to kill a story uh, or you get ahead of the story and you report the truth uh, and in this case, it would have been really good for people to come out and say, look, this really did happen. This really is what happened. Uh, here are the actual facts that cannot be denied. Uh, let's leave the editorialization. Let's leave the opinions out of it. Uh, anyways, getting back to John Bain's part of that. He, John Bain was on the right side of history. Total Biscuit was on the right side of history. Uh, 
and he kind of was only the only one that it was and he was ostracized for it to the point where even like when Laura Kate Dale who is a major SJW herself and I think even she would admit it uh, uh, I, I guess it doesn't give credibility to her being an SJW and the fact that she's a trans woman I, I think it probably does uh, Laura Kate Dale had an interview Total Biscuit for a article and then uh, caused a controversy because uh, people were still mad at Total Biscuit and that was like a year ago for, for being on the right side of history with uh, Gamergate instead of defending the video game uh, industry as if it's just one entity that needs to be protected and worshipped uh, and so then her Kotaku UK interview of him then had to come out uh, they they didn't stand behind him or the interview really they came out and basically disavowed him uh, so that was sleazy but it is the example I have, I suppose, of what really happened. And I imagine there were many, many other instances where he was just blacklisted. Uh, and, and in a weird way, when you look at these... Uh, look at, it, at these stories, they're, they're not going to talk about Gamergate. Uh, at least they've learned their lesson there. Uh, in, in his... In his, what would you call these? Death announcement stories that probably were pre written, one would think. Th there's not a lot to say about his life other than Gamergate. Uh, it's, it's kind of a sad realization for any YouTuber, but. When I look at the four years my channel's been on there, it's it's game after game after game after game. And I was telling this to someone, uh, I believe Lemon Lover, on the, the chat. It's like, I really don't have an identity that's developed there as a critic. And, and since I am a critic, I'm not even sure I'm supposed to have an identity. Um, so... Yes, Total Biscuit probably covered tons and tons of games, but are you going to talk about any of those when you think of him? No. Uh, you're just going to say he was on co-optional podcasts, but did he say anything specifically amazing on any co-optional podcast uh, stream? Not that I can really think of. Uh, there's no masterpiece work for a critic. Uh, like, it's just the case. Uh, for me, I think some of my early, my first work of playing the, the Binding of Isaac may have been some of the craziest and silliest uh, footage I made where I was much more of a less of a critic and more of a relaxed attempt at a personality and just talking about random things but but there's, there's no real creation when you're a critic. And so there, there's not a lot to push point to. And there's, there isn't a ton of creation anyways for a, uh, for a YouTuber either. It's like, um, while I might be particularly proud of some of the games I've covered, there, there's not a ton of them that nothing really jumps out. The, the Portal series, maybe, just because I, I know that game was kind of amazing, um, and I had a lot of familiarity with it more than most. Like, if I was to die tomorrow, somebody might eulogize me, uh, that was the word I was looking for, eulogy, uh, by saying I covered a lot of... Uh, of Lego games, they, they might point out some of my sillier things when I covered like Honey Pop or 
uh, or when I uh, covered how do they do it, which that was a horrible video, so I don't know where to point out, point out that, the bad one. Uh, people very well might eulogize me as a Hearthstone streamer. Uh, I imagine, since it keeps coming up and since it keeps getting having to be talked about, and I try, try, but it's hard to, to avoid it uh, because of the way the world just gets more and more uh, messed up. The people might theorize me as a as an anti SJW political commentary theater even which is not what I would describe myself as but I, I've had to have this conversation so many times and frankly I'm probably 100% preaching to the choir so it, it, it's, it's hardly likely that anybody new is learning anything or doing anything or changing their opinion That is a very interesting idea though. Maybe all video game, mainstream video game reviewers and critics should be forced, I guess would be the word, to listen to and watch like random YouTube Twitch streamers. Uh, people like me who are actually talking about the video games and talking about the video game world. Uh, I don't know how many people actually cover the video game news media and their actions as much as I do. Uh, and frankly, they didn't listen to Total Biscuit. They're not going to listen to me. Uh, uh, let's. I guess that's where we just kind of have to leave it. Um, I kind of worry for the co-optional podcast because unless Jimba Bain really jumps in there and starts keeping that show on track, Jesse Cox is going to run in there and it's going to make it too silly of a a podcast stream to, to be worth watching. Um, it's just not going to flow well I, I think and right now the other girl not Gemma Bain I forget her name uh, just had a child so there, there's a lot of opportunity for the co-optional podcast to fall apart which kind of sucks because they were bringing in other YouTubers and, and th I guess I would like to see wow. a a place where video game YouTubers get together and talk every now and then. Heck, I that might be something I'd even be willing to to go on myself and co converse with other video game YouTubers, Twitch streamers, and and we could discuss business. Moving on. Um, Let's see, Gimetsu has a new game trailer for a game called Sei Aiku Naru Sayaku Nigen Ni Sasuku, <laughs> which boy is that a mouthful. It's a PlayStation 4 game of some sort. It has a cover of an anime girl lying in a puddle so it's, it's it's not just an anime girl it's a little anime girl like uh, lying in a puddle so it, it's probably dark uh, it says it's a genre is incredibly transparent and cruel disaster world type novel adventure game rated 15 and up playstation 4 uh zero rating of 15 and up so I hunt alone. it's a visual novel with a dark spin, spin on it 
so we kind of know where that that's what I would have figured it is too is someone injured hmm. I would be very very surprised if this game comes to the west and if it does it certainly needs to come to the west in a different name because not only is the name a mouthful it, it just does not mean anything in English and usually there's some level of of translatability so the words probably do translate to something this might very well be a visual novel of one of these every now and then you get these incredibly incredibly depressing and and dark stories um, depressing and dark even for anime and manga uh, there was there was an anime that came out this latest season where where this girl is getting like bullied and and they like beat a cat in front of beat her cat to death in front of her and they're putting razor blades in her shoes to, to cut up her feet and and it just gets worse and worse and worse uh, and that's just even beyond what you would see most enemies go for I get a feeling that this visual novel might be around that level, but I'm not really seeing too much. It could be the exact opposite. It could be the character you're seeing is is not the victim, but the victimizer. Hmm. Gantz is an anime that kind of goes in that direction too, of being extremely dark and graphic uh, the manga I hear is even worse let's see uh, yeah Saiku Neru Sayuku Nigen Ni Sasugu which let's see if I could if I even try to google search this can I translate things? I must consider. Hmm. Let's see. Hmm. hmm. Like if you just Google search something, it doesn't translate it, so... Moving on, I suppose... Another victory. I'm writing a victory right now, so I don't want to stop playing until I lose, I guess. Um... Moving on, the PC Gamer has an article, The Sinking City Cinematic Teases, A 1920s World of Shadow and Insanity. So this is a teaser trailer. Let's see, when is this game actually coming out? Uh, it's going to be at the PC Gaming Show at E3. So this is a teaser trailer for a game that's going to get a teaser trailer uh, or, or a full trailer at E3. I guess we've hit that point now where we are going to start uh, getting trailers and, and promotions for promotions for E3. I'm going to have to be a little bit careful about not wasting my time uh, watching, watching ads for ads for ads. Uh, this trailer I'm looking at right now of the sinking city is it's like a city that's flooded like Venice but there's some kind of monster in the water like an octopus or a kraken uh, that has 
uh, knocked a guy's boat over and knocked him in the water and then now he's in a completely different area and I imagine that trailer and that scene does not connect up to anything that actually even happens in the game. A new sunken city like Bioshock type thing although this is more like Venice than it is Bioshock where the entire city was built and designed to be underwater from the first from the word go. Uh, PC Gamer has an article. Uh, Electronic Arts says female playable characters are here to stay. The presence of women on the Battlefield 5 has created controversy, but EA isn't backing away from it. Uh, so, is this a historical problem controversy? Because you think uh, giving people the option to play as a female for me in particular is exactly what I want like I, I always want more options uh, even if you have to create fictional characters now I, I could understand if you were to do something like make a game where Joan of Arc was turned into a male character that would be offensive if you would to do something where you said uh, Abraham Lincoln was actually a female uh, that would be offensive and I'm sure there's been a story or two that has done something like that but uh, but if you just create a new character uh, a new previously unheard of character that's female and put him in an environment like World War II where even where a female wouldn't, wouldn't actually be there, that's fine. I frankly wouldn't even mind in video game form to, since it's it's all an alternate universe anyways, it's not a an attempt to make accuracy work. If it, if it was really accurate, it would be boring. Uh, like, I wouldn't mind if they whitewashed it a lot and you had all kinds of minorities who wouldn't have been allowed to serve in the same battalions also working in the same battalions and um, like not every single game in fact no game really demands that it, it be historically accurate and an educational experience uh, Assassin's Creed Origins was a weird example of them trying to make something educational for something that really isn't. It's counter educational because of it uh, because of the assassin's BS that is done. Uh, the assassin's storyline in general. Let's see. Health, I guess. Uh, the presence has prompted a backlash from gamers concerned about historical accuracy of Battlefield 5's representative variety. Uh, let's see. Uh, this to me feels like a fake controversy. I haven't heard anybody say anything whatsoever about Kang about Battlefield 5 having a female character. What I've heard people concerned about is the fact that it's going to have cosmetic mi microtransactions but it's not going to have pay to win microtransactions which uh, on the face of it sounds good and that it's not going to have a single player experience unless this is one of the games that has a single player experience. Uh, Battlefield 5 at the bottom and this whole thing is really just an ad in the form of news reporting uh, as usual uh, it, at the bottom, bottom it says Battlefield 5 is coming out October 11th uh, for Origin Access subscribers October 16th for Deluxe Edition which costs $20 more and October 19th for Standard Release and see that is also something I've heard people 
complaining about is the fact that uh, that a considerable number of of people are going to be given early access uh, because they paid more and that inherently is a pay to win mechanic it's just a different type of pay to win mechanic let's see and frankly I, I would certainly want to side on the side of artists if the developers of the Battlefield series and their publishers can get together and agree and they want to make a battlefield that is all female warriors that is perfectly fine with me uh, I just saw like the arm of that lady it seemed like it was metallic but I, maybe I'm just seeing things this is a really dark fast moving trailer it, I don't think it it is it is a prosthetic arm Let's go on the lady begin. so that not only did they have to include a female they, they felt the need to also include a disabled female At the point of World War II, I'm not sure uh, prosthetics are, were that good, or I, I don't think we they would have been 100% to the point where if you lost a limb, you were guaranteed to die. But uh, which would have been Civil War era time level medicine. But also, I, I don't think you're you're just gonna be able to make a prosthetic arm. And use it, and even if you would, I don't think people would let you on the field. Uh, I suppose you could make a a military readiness argument, which has long since been an argument against females being on the battlefield in the real world. Uh, but particularly if her if her prosthetic arm is there. Uh, and it's a up to the shoulder missing uh, thing that that means that she wouldn't be able to hold the same amount of weight uh, uh, as far as pack uh, she wouldn't be able to load bullets as easily into clips uh, there's there's certainly some arguments that have been made in the past and could once again be made in the past against a disabled person being on the battlefield. Hmm. It's taken the United States in the real world a long time to to finally let women be in active combat in the military service and even at that the there's just so many better opportunities available for them than to go into active combat and so many physical demands that were specifically designed because like we have a certain strength requirements but we have like no flexi real flexibility or, or, or intelligence requirements really uh, so just the average man in general compared to the average woman is stronger uh, just has more muscle mass uh, and the requirements to be in that uh, suitable for active combat is based on an average man which kind of excludes all uh, uh, a lot of average females <laughs> Same is true for firefighting. Uh, now the better system might be to have a half and half mix of thing. Uh, we might find that that ha half of a squadron of females might be able to run faster or transverse and and move over train better. 
Um, of course, at this point, most military work is is not even the trench warfare of World War II. So the the real needs isn't isn't so much much of anything. It's just wear a bunch of armor and point an automatic gun and spray the bullets. Uh, anyways, like I said, that sounded like a fake controversy specifically designed just to advertise Hello. Battlefront 2. I haven't heard anyone talk about it at all. We've got a game on Steam called History Torca 2 and it's H period, I period, all the way down. Except for the A on Torca, T-O-R-C-H-A-A, -A, no period, but the period before everything else. What is this game? It looks like it's a Russian game. Uh, yeah, it's only in Russian. So whatever it is, I don't really care. Uh, to be fair to it, the first game is actually rated 91% positive for 12 users, but I'm not sure what that really means. But I certainly won't be wishlisting that. Uh, Steam right now has the Steam Spring Clean event going on where the there are several requirements that are having you go back and uh, and play old games that you haven't played in a while one of the requirements is installing the first game that you've ever installed on Steam which apparently for me is Dota 2 I do not believe actually it was Dota 2 that was the first game I ever bought on Steam but I may have bought something that literally is just not available on Steam anymore mm -hmm. uh, and it then moved it over to something uh, moved it over to Dota 2 like I don't remember installing Dota 2 ever but whatever um, maybe Dota 2 is simply the oldest game no that wouldn't make sense either hmm. uh, so doing the steam cleaning thing you would have had to do done you would have had to done three games yesterday and three games today so you, you've already missed out on getting the maximum unless there's some kind of catch-up ability in it, that they built into into it uh, and that kind of sucks darn it um, so it gets you a a badge and it gets you this mystery box item for these actual summer 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 sale which we'll see we'll have to see what the mystery box is all about There's a game on Steam called Star Tower. It's a total piece of junk game. It, it's supposedly a tower defense game, but I can't even understand how that would work based on what I'm saying. It just seems like it's a random assortment of crazy lines. Maybe, maybe these are satellite paths. Or orbits with a tower defense built around it. 
Uh, it just does not look good though at all. It looks like a total piece of junk. Uh, the Let's see if this is the developer that makes all the other Sakura games. Yes, it is. The developer of all the Sakura games are has come out with a new game called Sakura Sadist. To be fair, I've already looked at this game because I, I heard Co-Optional Podcast talk about it. Co-Optional Podcast looks ahead of time and looks at games that are scheduled to come out but they actually don't come out. Uh, so actually my system is much better. It, it allows me to skip a lot of garbage things that uh, I'm I'm not going to stop the streak. I'm not going to stop the streak until... Uh, I'm not going to stop the stream. I'm not going to stop the streak until I, I, I lose. Uh, so, so yeah, they see a lot of these these cheap, bad, uh, attempting to, to have sex appeal games that don't even come out, whereas I see a lot less of them, and, and I'm at a much narrower gateway. Uh, specifically about Sakura Sadist. Now, as a person who knows what the word sadist means, this game does not look too much about sadism. Uh, sadism is deriva deriving pleasure from causing other people to have pain or other people having pain um, or mental anguish or suffering. Uh, this it seems like it might, in this case, might boil down to a character who is slightly a bully. Usually sadism is used in the aspect of a sexual nature uh, to uh, derive sexual pleasure from causing other people pain. It is the yin to masochism's yang. Uh, well, a masochist uh, derives pleasure from from receiving pain. Sadists derive pleasure from giving it. You're not seeing any of this, though. Like that That's where the whole S&M bondage thing is, and you're just not seeing this. This is just a bunch of anime girls with... It, it really feels like there's only three anime girls in this whole visual novel. They all, for the most part, have the exact same body type, exact same uh, age, appearance, exact same like the hairstyle, different color hair, but it's all long hair. You, you don't have, and none of them have glasses. None of them seem to seem to go in any other direction. It's 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 bad waifu material. Uh, when making a story like this and the Sakura company is really a Western company trying to make Japanese anime games and they do a good job on the animation I'll, I'll give them that but they just don't get they just don't get it when uh, the idea is there this is however a game that has nudity and sexual content on it according to the tags so that whole thing about Steam kicking off games with nudity uh, seems to have just kind of disappeared. Uh, the way Jesse Cox covered what happened with that, I think, was pretty bad. Like, like I, I just don't think he he had done enough research. Uh, I've officially decided to. As I'm going through the Steam's uh, spring cleaning event and having to install a bunch of uh, uh, games, which is particularly not good for my hard drive, uh, SSD, uh, and I frankly just don't have that much space. Thank you. The as I'm going through that, like I, I decided, you know what? It's time to it's time to give up. I haven't played Sakura Clicker in a very long time. I haven't played Hero Clicker in a long time. I haven't been played Tap Tap Heroes in a long time. I'm going to keep Time Clicker because I'm really trying to get to the end of that. But 
The truth is, I haven't even watched those games and they've been sitting installed for way longer than they should have been. Your magic shall not save you. This is, I think, this is gonna be the point. Hmm. So, so I've uninstalled Sakura Clicker. Uh, in the end, Time Clickers is the victory. Victor, it is the one game that that had enough going on for it for me to want to keep going back and playing with it. Where the, the Sakura Clicker, Tap Tap Heroes, and the rest. Uh, Every other clicker game I, I s tried to play and see how far I could get just didn't have what I was looking for in it. Now I still would fully submit I would prefer to to play Sakura Clicker visually and but since clicker games for the most part at least in my implementation on how you play them are done by just launching the app and then ignoring it and coming back once a day or so much like a mobile game the visuals don't didn't matter that much uh, if the mechanics that existed in time clickers had existed in Sakura clicker I'd play it but it doesn't and that's the problem and frankly I, I kind of prefer that there was was a better more visually appealing version of Sakura Clicker than Sakura Clicker, which maybe there is one out there. So the streak is broken, but we made it to rank 19 on the Asian account. That is something to applaud, and so now we need to play Priest cards. Uh, that's going to be it for this recording. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe. Click that notification bell, it's even more important because it seems like YouTube is changing the subscribe feed. I'll talk about that more next recording, but they're experimenting with changing the subscriber feed so it doesn't appear in chronological order, much in the same way that I hate Twitter works, and Instagram apparently is trying to do that, and Facebook already does that, and every other service is just trying to put some kind of algorithm on top of your subscription feed so you cannot see the things you really want to see you have to see the things they want you to see um, so click the notification bell maybe that would help ideally though I think you're gonna to have to sign up for multiple services uh, Facebook or Twitter and follow me on that too because uh, you need like three or four places to, to get notifications now to even have a chance uh, so yes all, all of the links are down below in the description uh, to friend and follow me on on those services if you want to support me even further uh, give me a game on Steam the summer sale is is about to happen so that'd be a great time for people to give me games or if you want to gift me a gift card right now so I have funding so I can personally purchase games for the summer sale that it would be great too i've been in quite the funk as far as playing games but i'm i'm feeling the itch once i'm done with lego star wars force awakens to play a big game and really get into making more footage and it won't really affect anything anyways because i still every monday through friday and now sometimes on the weekends am I am releasing lots and lots of footage of other games. That's it for this recording. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.